This is a test to make sure the microphone's working properly. See, that's a test I do every time I make a recording because it's got a P in it, so I can hear if my P's are popping. It's got an S in it, and because I have basically a speech impediment from loss of teeth, um, I need to make sure that I am oh articulate enough that people can understand what the heck I'm saying. This is a brand new world. It's called New World. <laughs> And I uh, previously loaded it in 1.5.2 so I could get it started. A path from Spawn House to this little village I found that will eventually be a railroad when I have the resources available. I'm playing on creative and on survival. I'm playing on peaceful and on easy um, because I there are things I'm going to want to get done that I don't want to, like building the railroad tracks and stuff. I put, built it on creative with resources that I had in my hot bar. I'm not allowed to go into the magic creative inventory and get more resources. But I can use what's in my hot bar. So I built that uh, railroad trellis that you notice didn't have any tracks on it because I haven't found enough iron and stuff to build railroad tracks. As a matter of fact, what I'd rather do is find an abandoned mine shaft and pill for that. So it won't have tracks until I have enough gold, iron, etc. to uh, build all that stuff and redstone for torches. So if it's a huge repetitive job, I am allowed to go into creative, but only if I already have the resources. There's one exception to this. I spawned in donkeys. I've always wanted donkeys. And I spawned in leashes so that I could get them safely into the village and uh, tame them and turn them loose inside the fenced village. That's the only exception. I've never had donkeys, and I want donkeys. And so I've got two donkeys and a little speckled horse so I can breed them and maybe breed them to the horse. Look out in this video and see if you see there are two desert temples. There's also, um, excuse me, two desert wells, and there's one desert temple. If you see anything else, like witch huts or jungle temples or something, please let me know. I only saw what I saw. I think we're coming up on something pretty close now. Um, so Brian Lorgon 111 was asking about memory because he recorded a video and he was dubbing over the audio because he sped up the video to four times because it was a 108 minute video. So he sped it up. There was a lot of branch mining and stuff and he figured that would be boring. And he's probably right. Uh, so uh, he gave himself another speed challenge to find blocks of, to make blocks out of ten different ores and eight different ores. There's the temple. And also to uh, find the two easiest to find records, chunk loading error. Now when that happened before, when magic launcher wasn't working, I jumped off the edge of the chunk error. And fortunately there was a little cave down inside and I jumped into the cave. But I didn't have any wood or anything so I couldn't make tools. And that's when magic launcher was crashing. And I think we can kiss magic launcher goodbye, darn it, because it's not functioning. So I'm loading this world now in 1.6.4 so that when the uh, new biome update takes place, I will have what I have. And this is just lost footage because I didn't, shouldn't even have recorded this. I just decided to explore that desert. Mostly I was looking for another village, hoping I could find a slightly larger one. Not that I mind mine. I mean, it doesn't have a blacksmith and all that. But, I mean, it has blacksmiths in it. It just doesn't have the shop or a chest in it or so on. But there, I have other stuff, and there's other, there's dungeons and that kind of stuff, so I'm not hurting. Um, but I'm so glad to have villagers. So he was asking about memory because he tried to record his audio over the sped up version of this challenge. And he forgot to hit record. So he talked for 25 minutes and then went, ah, because he didn't have any audio. And very, very rarely that happens to me. But see, I can't record audio while I'm filming Bandicam. I always have to record audio in post and narrate over the top because I have the freeware version of Bandicam. It doesn't work very well. Instead of looking at that, I should have been looking at that rectangle over to the right because I'll bet you anything it was a dungeon. Rats. Um, so I'm always recording on audacity and um, patching it in and you know I'm only using Windows Movie Maker because I can't afford software for editing either so everything I'm using is freeware so I always test my microphone before I start and I'm not saying Brian's stupid because he didn't do that I mean he was doing something different and that's his point 
when you do something different, does it make you mess up? And quite frequently it does. Um, I will say that I'm, in this respect, I'm relatively grateful that I have brain injuries because I have in the back of my mind and my subconscious most of the time that I probably shouldn't trust my memory and that I should have routines. For instance, he was talking about keeping your keys in the same place by the door, but then when you go visit somebody, where do you keep your keys? Well, in my case, it's in my purse, you know, so I can always find my stuff again. Uh, but I have little memory devices that I use constantly to keep me from messing up. Like I even put my seatbelt on when I'm just getting in the driver's seat to look for something on the dashboard or in the bag that I left on the passenger seat. You know what I mean? So the seatbelt goes on the minute I get in the truck. That's automatic. And I don't not do it because I don't want to train my, untrain myself from that habit. Uh, so I never do trust my memory. I never do assume that I know uh, how to do something or where something is or what happens next. So I developed all kinds of little devices that I use to keep myself going. For instance, using Yahoo Calendar to remind me of stuff or like this little timer that you see in the top right hand corner to let me know that Bandicam is going to run out because Bandicam is ticking off the minutes too. But it's very tiny, and it's up there where it says www.bandycam.com. So it's very tiny, and I'm trying to concentrate on the game. So I have that big white timer. It's no guarantee, but I set the timer for the birds to tweet at 9 minutes because I only can record for 10 minutes. So I figured that would give me enough time to wrap up whatever I'm doing, stop doing it, and hit the stop button, and then hit record again, like even if I'm being attacked by cooties. You know, maybe I could build a little cry box around me and restart stuff, something like that. So uh, having, it's, it's not just the brain injuries, it's also the PTSD because I, this is why I'm having difficulty habituating to the game is because the PTSD gets triggered by the game when I'm in danger. I start, my whole physiology changes, the breathing, respiration, blood pressure, that was interested in what was glowing under the water. Uh, blood pressure, heart rate, everything. I, I'm sure I can feel my adrenals going crazy. There's lava right under there. That would not be glowing if it wasn't. Uh, and when I panic, I literally black out. Literally am walking unconscious. I don't know what I'm doing. Or the other thing that could happen is like in a, if somebody confronts me in a really aggressive manner, I'm always afraid not of what they're going to do, but of what I will do if I flip out because I could lose it and become uh, under fear of threat. I could become physically violent. I could attack somebody. So that's why I avoid confrontations, not because I'm afraid of other people, but I'm afraid of my own response. Now, I do a lot of caretaking around that so that I won't have those kinds of reactions in confrontations confrontational situations because I can't control what other people around me are going to do. You know what I mean? Um, I've got to be prepared to control myself. So I have to do a lot of work and a lot of practice and a lot of um, uh, routine stuff. And because I have the routine, that liberates me to be free to live my life and enjoy my life and not have to be afraid of uh, the consequences of having brain injuries. I don't feel ashamed of the consequences of my brain injuries. When I see something happen that needs correcting, I work on finding ways to correct it rather than blaming myself or calling myself stupid or telling myself how inadequate I am, that kind of thing. And I think a lot of people who don't have diagnosed um, neurological issues or psychological issues don't know to do that. And they, they do blame themselves and call themselves stupid and whatever. And that self-shaming, that doesn't help. And in fact, it can make it worse. So uh, that's what I do about memory. And I'm running out of time right now. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.